Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Westcott, and I'm the chief engineer and co-leader of my school's aerospace engineering team. Over the past four years, our team has competed in the American Rocketry Challenge, also known as TARC. TARC's a really interesting competition because it's all about building very, very precise rockets to meet very, very precise goals. And over these four years, I've been primarily in charge of developing the electrical, software, and hardware systems that enable our vehicles to meet these goals. And now that I'm a senior and graduating soon, I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to share back some of the lessons that I've learned over these four years for other people who are either working on TARC teams or who want to build their own active control systems. So first of all, this series is going to be focused on concise, to the point videos that group together different aspects of developing an actively controlled rocket. The plan is to make six videos right now. The first one, this one, is going to be a little overview of TARC and why we want to build this active control system. The next video is going to be on simulations, so simulating the path of the rocket and the impact that this active control system has on its flight path. Uh, then we'll move on to the mechanical hardware side of things, so actually um, how to 3D print the designs that make this. Then we'll talk about the uh, flight computer hardware, so building the electrical systems that are capable of transmitting power and data throughout our vehicle. Uh, then we'll talk about the software systems that go into uh, writing the code for this vehicle and programming it, telling it what to do. And then finally, we'll tie up with uh, talking about flight testing and uh, what we've done to validate our system. So that's the plan at the moment, but things might change as we go through this series. So let's get started by talking about the rules of TARC. So the primary objective of TARC is to get the lowest flight score possible. A perfect score is a score of zero. It's a lot like golf. You want the fewest number of strokes possible. So points are added uh, two ways to our flight score. Uh, first of all, uh, through how high we fly and also through how long our total flight's duration is. So this year's altitude goal is 800 feet. And every foot that we're off that goal, one point is added to our flight score. So if we fly 810 feet, 10 points are added. And if we fly 790 feet, 10 points are also added. Uh, points can also be added through our flight duration score. So this year's flight duration goal is 40 to 43 seconds. So if we're within that range, no points are added. But every second that we're outside of that range, four points are added to our flight score. So if we fly to 810 feet and have a flight duration of 44 seconds, that would be a total flight score of 14 points. And this again is why TARC is all about precision. You need to be as precise as possible in your altitude and as precise as possible in your total flight's duration. Now while we're doing this, we also have to carry a payload. This year's payload is one raw egg. Um, it has to weigh between 55 and 61 grams and it needs to have a diameter of less than 45 millimeters. This year we're lucky that it's only one egg Last year, it was three of these eggs. Uh, now, there are also some uh, requirements in regards to the rocket's airframe and how it flies. So um, the, the biggest ones are that it has to weigh under 650 grams, it can only have one stage, and the entire vehicle has to stay together from liftoff until it lands. And so the reason that we want to build an active control system is because we want to be able to tune out our flight in real time. So there are... Um, what, one way of doing it is uh, building your rocket and then manually changing your launch angle or the size of your parachute or adding small drag brakes onto your rocket before you fly to try to tune out your flight's profile. But the problem is that there are literally thousands of parameters that go into affecting a, uh, the, uh, the performance of a flight. You know, just one more mile per hour of wind could affect your apogee by many feet. Um, you know, having a, a small inconsistency in the angle of the launch rod, the air pressure, the air temperature, all of these things will affect your flight in so many different ways. What we want to do is we want to be able to design a system that can dynamically change the drag of the vehicle so that in flight we can say, oh, are we going to overshoot our target? Let's add more drag. And then on descent, we can say, you know, how fast are we falling? Uh, and let's adjust our air brakes accordingly so that we can land right in this target duration right here. And so really an active control system just provides us with so much more control authority than any other type of control method. Now as a quick aside, 
I say actively controlled, not actively guided, because in this series specifically, we're not going to be talking about thrust vector control, canards, or uh, any system that pitches, yaws, or rolls the vehicle. We're simply going to be talking about air brakes, which add or decrease drag from the vehicle in order to meet our apogee and time duration goals. Now, I'm also gonna be releasing a lot of the files and code associated with this project. Uh, there is a rule uh, if you're competing in TARC where if you're 3D printing something and putting it on your rocket, you can't use someone else's design. You have to design it and uh, go through the whole printing process yourself. However, I would like to release my, uh, my STLs just so that you can um, you know, look at it, learn from it, um, and you know, hopefully improve on my design uh, for your own rocket. All right, that's all for today. Uh, the next episode should be coming out within a week. And um, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I would love to respond to them. Thank you so much. See you next time.